despite being less than two hours long, Over the Garden Wall has a bunch of moving parts, especially thematically. But one of the most interesting facets of the show revolves around Wirt and his journey to find out who he truly is. This idea is touched upon almost throughout the entire series, but no episode dives into what one's identity truly means more than the fourth and most musical episode of this very musical series, Songs of the Dark Lantern, and that's what we're talking about today. In this video, we're going to go through the episode, break down every single incredibly catchy song, and discuss how the people of the tavern symbolize different ways to construct your identity. Why don't you guys go ask for directions and I'll just wait out? No, wait, I, I don't want to be out here by myself. We open to the woodsman watching as a crazed wagon driver rambles about seeing the beast while unknowingly carrying our main characters and their newly acquired duck through the atmospherically dark rainy night. Eventually, after a few charming conversations between the trio about the beast, which foreshadows the big reveal at the end of this one, they're dumped off in front of the titular tavern, which serves as the location for most of this episode as they enter for directions. And after Beatrice is kicked out on the basis of bluebirds bringing bad luck, something that hits a bit differently upon rewatching when you know what actually happened to Beatrice in the first place, we finally get into the meat of the episode, as Wirt is asked by the Betty Boop-esque tavern keeper who he is, and not just what his name is. This question immediately causes Wirt to pause, and before he can get very far into his classic Wirt pseudo-poetical answer about not liking labels or whatever, we get into the first song of the episode with the highwayman taking the stage. And besides just completing the Betty Boop reference, as the fantastic animation heavily resembles the rotoscoping of Minnie the Moocher, the Highwayman song illuminates a few different things about how the people of the wonderfully charming yet somewhat nefarious tavern view identities, as he describes himself through what he does. Everybody in the tavern cheers him on for this, as even though he sings about knocking people out and leaving them on the side of the road, everybody there is so obsessed with boxing people in that they don't really care what he actually does. Everybody in the tavern identifies themselves by what they do actually, as everybody just calls each other by their respective old-timey job. And as Wirt eventually learns, because the only thing they've ever seen him do is act dumbfounded when asked a question, everybody has initially boxed him in as the witless, simple-minded fool. Because Wirt is a new person, something they likely don't get to see in the tavern every day, and because he doesn't have a well-defined occupation, they immediately jump to the first thing they can in order to try and understand him before he really gets to say much of anything at all. After he gets over the Highwayman song, Wirt eventually remembers what exactly they're doing in the tavern in the first place as he approaches the friendliest looking guy he can to ask for directions to Adelaide's. Unfortunately, in classic Wirt fashion, he stumbles over his words, with Adelaide's name being the only thing that really comes out coherently, causing the toy maker to come to the obvious conclusion that Wirt must be after a girl and not just a witless, simple-minded fool. And while that initial description of Wirt was based on what he does, throughout the infinitely catchy song that follows, the people of the tavern begin to label him based on his relationship to others as he becomes nothing but a lover boy. Throughout the lyrics of this one, very little is actually said about Wirt, as they describe the various ways that each person can use their occupation to become involved in their wedding. And while I do think it's somewhat unfair to say that the tavern folk are being malicious throughout this episode, it definitely feels a bit uncomfortable listening to them list every single way that they can individually benefit from Wirt's situation. Eventually, after pretty much every inhabitant has staked their claim in Wirt's eventual marriage, they all want him to sing about his identity as well and as confidently as all of them have. Except, when he tries, it goes about as well as you would imagine. And while you can blame his song being so terrible on the fact that Wirt is just about the most awkward teenager imaginable, I think it's also representative of the fact that, even after the extremely helpful two songs that he's listened to, Wirt still ultimately has no idea who he is. When told to sing his his lover boy song, he's so overwhelmed by the expectation of what his song is supposed to be about 
something that he's not, at least for Adelaide that is, that all he can do is stumble around confirming that he and Greg are half-brothers before ending his song. At this point, when Word's complete lack of confidence confirms to everybody that he's not anywhere near a girl agreeing to marry him, he receives one final title from the people of the tavern, and instead of being based on what he does or his relationship to others, this time it's based on his goals, as he receives the title of Pilgrim. And while this title isn't exactly perfect either, as Wirt is trying to get home from the unknown instead of the other way around, the idea that he is some kind of hero on a sacred journey obviously appeals to him more so than the other two titles that he's been given. As he and Greg, who I've somehow not talked about in this episode, but he has fantastic gags throughout all 11 minutes, both describe the heroics of their journey so far, obviously leaving out the details that reveal Wirt's actions as more timid than described. However, as he goes on and on about his adventures to the cheers of the crowd, as soon as he mutters the name of the beast in passing, everybody stops, as the tavern keeper launches us into the third song. And whereas the first song was about the highwayman's identity, and the second and third songs were about Wirt, this one focuses on the series antagonist, as we hear him described by somebody other than the woodsman. While this song is full of catchy lyrics and such, the most the most important one for the audience's idea of who the beast truly is, is her warning to not believe the beast lies. And while this development serves in this episode to make Wirt believe that the woodsman is actually the beast, when that's revealed to be false at the end of the episode, it takes on a whole new life, as the audience begins to wonder if the beast's lies are what got the woodsman into their arrangement in the first place. Either way, back to Wirt. After he hears the screams of Beatrice, he decides to test the pilgrim title handed upon him by the people of the tavern. As he grabs his brother, and the horse that Beatrice has been talking to for the whole episode, and rides off to try and save her. Eventually, after this really fantastic shot, he finds her unconscious body next to the woodsman, who Wirt quickly attacks, setting the forest ablaze as he makes it out with Beatrice, who quickly reveals that she wasn't attacked, but only saw a weird shadow before knocking herself out by flying into a tree. And just on cue, as Wirt and Greg explain that they got directions from the horse that Beatrice Beatrice thought was mute, another example of a character assuming someone's identity before really getting to know them, the weird shadow that she saw emerges, as we finally see and hear the beast for the first time. As he instructs the woodsman to keep the flame going, as he mentions following our brother duo. Ending the episode with one final song, this time of a different Dark Lantern. La la la, chop the wood to light the fire. Given the name of the show's location, it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that a good chunk of Over the Garden Wall is about the characters having to face the idea of the unknown just as much as the forest of the unknown. With Wirt especially being terrified of the future that he can't control, with the show's locations and situations representing that fear. And it's not just Wirt who feels uncomfortable with things that he cannot control or know, as that fear also resides in various denizens of the unknown, including the inhabitants of the tavern. When Wirt and Greg first walk in, everybody in the Dark Lantern sees the brothers as an unknown entity, and immediately begin to try and classify them into any box they can, first based on what he does, then his relationships, and then his goals. Whenever they see any kind of evidence that he doesn't perfectly fit into one of these tropes, he's immediately shoved into another one before he can even start to explain who he actually is. The people of the tavern are so afraid of the idea of somebody they don't know inhabiting their tavern that they try to turn Wirt into somebody that they do know in the fastest way possible, as instead of actually trying to get to know him, they just keep trying to assign different predetermined sets of characteristics onto him until one sticks. Of course, everybody trying 
to stick a bunch of different labels onto a very impressionable teenager doesn't exactly do wonders for Wirt, as he spends the first 70 or so percent of this episode desperately trying to claim that he's not as he's being described, all the way until he hears a label that he likes, where he clings onto the idea of being a pilgrim. And initially, the idea of Wirt believing in his identity seems to be a good thing, as it allows him to have the courage to face the unknown of the beast and ultimately believe that he saved Beatrice. However, unknown to Wirt, all his false identity has led him to do is hurt the innocent woodsman, and his self-diagnosis as a heroic pilgrim will go on to hurt him again before he returns home. While not knowing who he is led him to fear the unknown, as seen through his initial hesitancy to enter the tavern, trying to cling onto one thing and making that the entirety of who he is, even if that one thing doesn't happen to be true, leads him to even more disastrous consequences later down the line. But ultimately, without those consequences, Wirt never would have developed into the person he becomes by the end of the show, as the struggle of trying to figure out what his identity is was the only way Wirt was ever going to actually figure out who he truly is. Anyway, that's about it for me and the first of the three Halloween videos of the month. If you want to see even more of my takes on animation for some reason, you can find my Twitter somewhere in the description. But either way, this has been Ample Samuel, and I'll see you in about a week for some more Halloween-y goodness. Thanks for watching.